Welcome to Too Old, Too New, the music discovery podcast that brings you something old, something new, something Nate, something Bruce. I'm Nate Runkel, host of the Yo, That's My John podcast, and with me, as always, is my good friend Bruce Warren of WXPN. Yo. The premise of this show is simple. Each week, we bring you two songs apiece, one new song that has been metaphorically spinning our turntable platters, and one old song that we believe still absolutely matters but this week we have a surprise special guest jo- guys we are joined today by the great nicole atkins nicole thank you for joining us on too old too new you're very welcome nice to see you guys we are so excited uh, this is the first time we've had a guest on the show and really? uh, it, there's not a better person to kick things off having guests with than than yours truly. you're right Right. So the fu- so the future the future of us having guests is either going to go uh, it, it can only go one way. Um, so just keep that in mind, Nicole. No 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 str- bl- no no pressure no pressure. Okay, don't blow um, it for you guys. But Nate Nate, why the fuck didn't you have like an applause track ready? Like you know when you introduced <laughs> Nicole. Hold on. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There you go. That, now we're talking. Thank you, Nate. Now we're talking. <laughs> you hey, Nicole, good, Nicole, great to see you. Great to see you. You too. Um, so, so what's been going on? What, 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 you're, you seem to be an exotic locale. What's, uh, I am. What's your... <laughs> I am. Um, I'm in uh, Todos Santos, Mexico. I'm actually in, in Pescadero, Mexico, and uh, in, down in Baja at this place called Modern Elder Wisdom that was started by um, the guy that helped start Airbnb, this guy Chip Conley as a place for people 35 and older to go and figure out like what they want to do like you know oh i'm retiring and i want to write a book how do i do that or you know i'm uh switching jobs and i want to start a boutique hotel i don't know like there's a lot of people out here that are like seekers and uh, i became friends with the manager uh this uh gail who's from pennsylvania she's a john and uh You know, so she and I became friends when she worked at a different hotel and then moved over here where I would trade a gig for a stay. And now um, her and I and uh, the yoga guy, Teddy Dean Bennett, we started the summer program to help people connect to creativity, like art and music in a way that they haven't since they were young. So me and uh, Binky Griptite from the Dap Kings are out here. We did it last summer. It was really fun. And so we're doing it this summer. And I think it's funny that I'm doing this podcast with you guys because it's a lot about what I'm talking about. Like, why do we stop listening to music and stop searching for music in the way that we did when we were younger at a certain age? And I thought I would never do it. I remember being at a thing where I was getting the Sammy Kahn Award for my lyrics to Neptune City and Billy Joel was getting a Life Achieve- Lifetime Achievement Award. And he got up there and he was ranting about, there's no new good music. People don't write songs anymore. And I was just like, fuck you. You know, like when's the last time Billy Joel was in a club, you know, because, you know, or when people say rock and roll is dead, when's the last time you went to a club? It's never died. It's just, you know, goes in and out yeah. of like popularity, which has nothing to do with how good the music is. You know, it's always yeah. just like, you know, what's trendy and what's, you know, what people want to put money into or what people are talking about. And uh, then I realized that like this last, you know, few years, I've been like in a state of like, oh, everything sucks and listening to lots of talk radio. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm I'm, you know, committing that sin, the Billy Joel sin. And uh, I found so much good music that I love. And I started to remember to, you know, wake up to music instead of talk radio because it sets the tone for my day. Every time I do it, every time I remember to do it, it's like, oh. Yeah, I started the day with the Beach Boys or Bell and Sebastian. I'm okay. You know, the day's going to... It has a possibility of being a great day if I start it with music. So I'm back in my, my search mode, and it's it's nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you, so do you do yoga also? <laughs> I went to the class yesterday for the first time since I okay. was here last year. So I'm going to try. All right. so. Nate, are you a yoga person? Uh, so... Uh, Yes, with an asterisk, kind of. Um, I had a very uh, detailed stint with uh, DDP Yoga, which is Diamond Dallas Page from the World no uh, Championship Wrestling. Wow. Yes, yes, yeah. Man, yeah, he has that a, is so cool. 
he has a yoga program and it's like it's like aggressive yoga you know it's like the kind of yoga that like a guy can do and not feel um you know less manly or whatever which isn't why i did it i just did it because i like ddp uh so yeah (laughs) yeah see i think i would like it too just because i get you know like my mind is always going a mile a minute and so when i do regular yoga it's like the first 20 minutes i'm like okay is this going to be over soon this has got to be over soon oh my god this has been forever and then after 20 minutes i'm like not thinking about it so yeah. if it was like just like crazy diamond dallas page yoga like boom 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 i wouldn't have time to think about when it's going to be over or maybe yeah, I would. You, bruce do, bruce are you are you a stretcher do you uh do you yoga i don't i do, i don't i've okay. done it once i've done yoga once and a friend of mine took me to hot yoga oh wow that and was, I was the like, one that was the one time, and like it was, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't believe I actually made it through the entire session. It's like, um, it's but, hard. You know, High I, but I've been a runner for 40 years, you know, and like yeah. almost every day of the last 40 years, I've run at least two to three miles. You know, I've That's done amazing. So my body is, you know, used to exercise on some level. Yeah. Um, so it, but I was, it took, it took me out for a few days though. I'm, I'm telling you, it was just like, I whoa. Like, yeah. Bruce, do you, do you run in the hoodie? Um, you know what? Um, I do run in, in a hoodie. And in fact, I even put a wool cap on sometimes, even during the what? summer. Because I love this. I love to sweat. Like if I don't You're sweat. Like Madonna. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm kind of weird. <laughs> That's but how you stay let me go back. I want to go back to, though, to. <laughs> I want to go back, though, Nicole, to what you were saying about, like, you know, sort of like losing the connection to your creativity, you know, like. Yeah. I, I can't speak for, like. Most of the people that I know are in the music industry. You know, I have a handful mm-hmm. of friends who yeah. are in the music industry, and they're and they're all music fans. They're huge music fans. Yeah. Um. But, so I don't know if it's different for sort of whether it's not it's different for people who are in the music business or musicians when they become I don't know my word cynical or lose touch with the thing that yeah. made you fall in love with stuff in the first place. And I remember a couple of years before the pandemic, I was starting to just get like ah music ah you know yeah and and i had to find a way to in to like get back into my inner fandom you mm-hmm. know yeah so it was you know it was actually my son who who gave me the idea and he goes you know dad you should listen to an album a day and you should just track it and like just whatever you feel like listening to that should be the first thing you listen to every day and if you have to come back to it if you can't listen to it in one sitting just like mm-hmm listen to it over the course of the day and i've been doing it now for like four years and every day i listen to a new album it could be old it could be something new but it 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 takes me out of being in the industry right as a as a program director music director whatever yeah and puts me in the seat of being a music lover and it Mm -hmm. really freed me up um that's amazing freed me up to the point where i was discovering a lot more genres of music that i wouldn't necessarily listen to so because I think go- when you work in like the industry... sounds like you're doing some cool shit down there. Yeah, when you work in the industry, like as, you know, like a musician or as a radio person or as, you know, like a promoter or anything, you, when you've been doing it for so long, um, you start to think that there's no new sounds out there. You know, like I've heard it all. I've seen it all. Okay, you know, how everything's cyclical. Okay, all the kids now, they're doing 90s music. or And that's just so not true. You know, because you forget yeah. about being a fan. And I think that, uh, you know, you can get beaten down by work. You can get beaten down by other people's opinions or lack of opinions about your work. And you forget you became a musician or a DJ or a promoter or an A&R person because you love music. Right. So, yeah, that connection to being a fan again will never let you down. Yeah. You know? well, yeah. that was that was that was what happened to me was uh, I got I became jaded musician guy because um, I kept watching bands get signed and I was like this fucking guy, um, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but so yeah. and then I so then I was just like music, m- music just passed me by and, and stuff like that. So I stopped I stopped I stopped digging into it. But then the pandemic hit. And all of a sudden, like, I started watching people kind of find the what I find is the true essence of creativity and music and, and the need to connect to a listener and to an audience. It became less yeah. about 
a lot of the bullshit and a lot of the industry stuff and became once again about the music and connecting c- connecting with an audience um and that's yeah. kind of what recharged me and you know bruce similar to you i've like every friday i go through the new releases whether i know the artist or not and i just start trying trying new albums based on oh that album cover is cool or i've heard yeah. something about this band in the past uh, let's give it a shot and like it it's completely changed my relationship with music for the better yeah absolutely that's good. the connection that's is the, the best way it should part. be you know all right so um hey nicole um n- now n- not 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 everybody who listens to our very popular podcast is from the Philadelphia area. However, you are coming back to the Philadelphia area yes, soon, right? Yes, I am. At a we joint, are. At a joint called 118 North. We haven't played Philly since we played XBN Fest. That is right. I was talking That was a to, long I, time ago. That was a long time ago, yeah. It was a long time ago. 2019, I still have the uh, cease and desist email from uh, <laughs> put it using the Exponential Music logo. Oh, that's great. YouTube Did video. you hang it up? Yeah, I, keep, it, I would print that out and hang it up. That's saved. cool. It's bookmarked in my favorites. Good. I feel like I bookmark things and I just forget yeah. what a, a bookmark is. <laughs> exactly. You exactly. know, I'm like, oh, exactly. I need this. I just have a But yeah, I can't, we can't wait to come back to, uh, to Philly. It's in Wayne, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. yeah. which, um, uh, you know, it's North Philly. And uh, it's West Philly. It's, it's oh, is it of, West? Northwest? It's, it's, it's the Western part of Philadelphia area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. West Philly's cool. Gritty. They do a and, uh, uh, they do a great music fest there too uh, over the summer. The Wayne yeah. Music Fest. What one? Wayne. Oh, music the Wayne Music. Fest. Yeah. The Wayne Music cool. Festival. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually got the idea for the for the art poster based off of the the, the show in Wayne. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know why. Whenever I think of Philly, I think of basketball. I think of the Seventy Sixers, and then I was like, Yeah, I want to draw women basketball players from the seventies, but cartoon. And since the tour's only in September, I'll put the date on the jerseys and the city. Right. And so I drew a Wayne one and I was like, that's cool. That's what it's going to be. That's incredible. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to put that out soon, but we're going to sell them at the shows. And the the last club show we did in Philly, that was one of my most memorable gigs ever. It was a sold out show at the Boot and Saddle and my brother quit his job of 25 years and broke up with his girlfriend oh. and decided to come to my show on the way to Atlantic City. So they were... They had it tied on good. <laughs> and I was like, who are these people? Because in the show, like, you know, everybody's into it. But there's Jersey, Jersey. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And then we're doing a ballad. And I hear my brother laughing. And right. unmistakable. Like, <laughs> and I'm just like, hey, Scotty, shut the fuck up. And everybody's like, shut the fuck up, Scotty. Shut <laughs> the fuck up, Scotty. And it was so great. And it was during like, you know, a, a night of serious drinking, which is like this really intense ballad. And that we did the chant. And then I was like, okay, now part like the Red Sea. And I was going to sing the last note of the way it is. And then run through the crowd, high fives, get out of there. And I did it. And then my brother's like, sissy, and comes up to give me a hug. And I was like, no. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I'm hoping for a remake of that in Wayne. And it's September 11th. And uh, you said that there's no other shows going on in Philly that day. So that's there's right. No ex- there's no excuse. But it's a really, it's a fucking <laughs> incredibly busy season here in Philly. It's, it's like touring is insane everywhere. I know because um, it's the only way people can make money. Exactly, exactly. But they, uh, seriously, I was just looking. I, I, I showed this to Nate. I made a list of all the shows that are happening in Philadelphia in September through mid October, and it's oh. like two pages. Yeah, there's some nights where there are multiple, like multiple shows that like I could see myself at, like, inc- like you know. I do that now. Yeah. I go to multiple shows. That's why I have no money anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know? I should consider actually doing that. Uh, that's actually a good idea. I never thought about that. I rem- the last night, the last show I saw before the pandemic, I remember I went and saw Refused at uh, a Brooklyn Steel. And I was, and then Binky Griptite was playing with the Binky Griptite Orchestra at a club. And I was like, I want to see both. And then I'm like, what am I doing? But I did both. And man, I was so glad I did because I didn't know I was going to get any after that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but well, uh, we're psyched to uh, we're psyched to see you. So uh, yeah, I can't I can't wait. And I, I want to give my tip though for you, my show tip for a show to definitely not miss: uh, JD McPherson and Kate Clover. Okay, I suggested Kate as the opener, and I was like, yes, he listens to me. 
Kate Clover. Because no right. one does. Not familiar. She's, that, she's a, like a punk band. It's a punk band from uh, L.A. Okay. And she's just like, she's got like the Chrissy Hind, like, uh, wow. but then she, she talks like Cindy Lott, but like she's just <laughs> such a, it's great. And the songs are like, kind of like the Buzzcocks, like really melodic, but okay. just like, and I love it. That's great. Great recommendation. Definitely want to. Check it out. Yeah, you should check it out. Speaking of recommendations, um, I believe you yeah. have a new song to present to people for our first uh, new of the something new. What do you got? The, my favorite new song, and I'm like obsessed, like multiple times a day listen, is from this band, The Last Dinner Party from England. And I, I feel like maybe I'm late to the game, you know, but new to me means out this year. And uh, it's a song called The Feminine Urge. Love that song. And oh. Geez, I feel like it reminds me a lot of like my first record. Yes. That kind of new romantic, you know, spy music, kind of James Bondy in the verse, and then a big ABBA chorus. I was afraid, you to, know? I was afraid to say it because I was like, did you pick a song that just sounds like you? Like, uh, because I, it's, like, that's I mean, why I like I what it. I like. I, it, the thing is, <laughs> what I sound like isn't because of me. It's right. because what I like. So, yeah, right. it's what you, I it's listen shared to. influences. I don't mean you it know? like it's I didn't invent yeah. shit. Yeah, I didn't invent shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I just like to combine the things I like. And then it seems like they like the same things. Well, so let, I'm just like, yay. Let's give a little listen to it. This is The Feminine Urge by The Last Dinner Party. It's so good. Like their their ability Ugh. to feel the fill the space is just fantastic. Like it's there is so dramatic. Wasted. It's so dramatic, and it's like here's a cool hook. Here's a cool hook. Here's a cool right. like everything is there, and I I, I love that uh, they made the record with James Ellis Ford, um, who he was the producer of the Last Shadow Puppets, right, and uh, the last two Arctic Monkeys records, and you can definitely hear that on there too. It's like it's a perfect combo. Yeah. By yeah. the way, James Ellis Ford, call me. <laughs> so I want to make my record with you so bad. Hell yeah. Um, Manifest that. Yeah. Manifest that. But <laughs> I love how, too, like her delivery in the verses, too, it's like sparks, you know? And uh, then, like, the, the chorus, you know, it's like Kate Bush and um, Pulp. A lot pulp. of Jarvis Cocker in there. A lot like, of Pulp. A lot of Pulp. So yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I hope that... They uh they played Philly um like before the album came out um mm -hmm. at, at Johnny Brenda's oh cool. um and man I wish I was there dude it was so fucking un it was unbelievable like you know you get you know we see a lot of live music but like yeah but that night was just like it was electric you like you could you could feel it like you could yeah. feel this band was just like you know just so and and they were so theatrical. It is yes. being dramatic. They were, were super theatrical and just like everything about it was, was perfect. And we, you know, yeah. we're, you know, yeah. that was in, I guess it was December when they played Philly uh, and the okay. record. So it's been a while and it's still yeah, one of they my. They had a good festival season. So yeah. I think they're starting to blow up. Yeah. And like, I want them to. And I, I'm actually thinking like maybe, you know how like Gen Xers got screwed, millennials got screwed. But the Gen Zers seem like they're going to have a better time because, and they're taking more control of shit. And they're yeah. like, "Fuck no to pay unpaid internships, fuck no to that, right. you know, fuck no to like not taking care of the planet." And I feel like maybe that'll happen with the industry, like the music industry too. So it's like these younger bands, like, don't sleep on them, right? Because they're going to make things better. Yeah, hell you yeah. know, hell yeah. yeah. Um, so Bruce and I decided to to have our our new and old. So I'm the new pick this week, um, okay. and and we also decided as a theme that we would both pick Nicole Atkins songs. Uh, since you're <laughs> so you here, could torture me by listening to my own. No, music. but so we <laughs> so we could pick your brain about things that we love. Yeah, is uh, is how it goes. Great. So for for uh, new, um, I uh, jumped in, and uh, you just released this as a, I believe as a Bandcamp exclusive. It's Bandcamp only. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I and, might put it on my record. Oh, okay, very cool. Um, so I just don't know yet. The thing that excited one of the things that excites me about it is you released it May third, which is a day after my birthday. So I personally took it as you released it. <laughs> it was, it, I, yeah, I did that on purpose. Uh, thank you. You're yeah, welcome. I'm so it. glad you like it. <laughs> That's how I knew we were friends. But anyway, yeah. uh, it's it, it's a duet with uh, Hamilton Lighthouser, and it's called uh -huh. a little word. Let's listen to a little bit of it right now. First of all, your voices together fucking perfect like he's my favorite person to sing with just because he like goes up there and i'm like okay good i can do it too you know 
It's so killer. And then, like, uh, I read about the background of this song. So, like, it's you, nuts. So, like, you just had you had free time in electric electric lady. Is that how it's? Yeah, I got asked to produce a session for this Detroit singer, this Detroit country singer from my friend uh, Jackson Smith guitarist and he was like can you just put together he's like he did a record with the Grand Ole Opry and it just sounds very like here's the song and here's everybody jamming and I want you know you put together weird I love putting together weird people for bands you know like basically like a and ring like who why did you put these people together you know and it's mainly because I know them personally and I know what I know what they're capable of so it's like you know that's my favorite thing to do but I didn't know how much to ask to be paid for it. So I just asked for my own day at Electric Lady. So I kept everybody. I had Jim Scalunos on drums from the Bad Seeds and Grinder Man, and uh, Moose from El King and Valerie June's band, and um, who else? Benny from Benny Trokin from Spoon. And uh, I played with Charles Bradley. And he, he just put out a great new record, too his, his uh, solo debut, Benny Trokin. Um, at, it's called Do You Still Think of Me? And I like to text him and say, I'm still thinking of you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, who else? Uh, it was uh, Binky, Grip Tight on guitar. And uh, that, that was the band. And so everybody picked a cover that they wanted to do. Because it was like, hey, let's all just get together. Everybody pick a cover they want to do. And I was like, oh, let's call Hamilton and see if he has one. And he picked a little word from Shirley and Lee. Wow. That they wrote Let the Good Times Roll and it was a it was a ballad. So a little word was a ballad. And I just it's of course the highest register possible for me to sing, which Hamilton l- likes to do and doesn't get that I'm not a soprano. <laughs> but I was like, man, if I belt this and think in my head that I'm Minnie Mouse and Ronnie Spector as a cartoon, I can sing this, but I kept hearing it in a reggae style and I thought everybody was gonna make fun of me and they didn't. And we got it together and then Hamilton was like, oh, this is cool. And he comes over in like a suit and he's like, I have a half an hour because I'm going to a dinner party. And we just knocked it out in two takes, singing together in the control room. And then he's like, all right, bye, I'm going to a fancy dinner party. <laughs> and I, I, when I became friends with Elvis Costello, you know, I remembered that he produced the specials first record. And so I sent it to him because I'm still like feeling like an imposter you know, I don't want to like be like, oh, I'm a reggae artist, you know. Pun, pun intended there, real quick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I said that to him when I was on his tour and he's like, Nicole, you do know what the name of our band is, yeah. right? And I was like, oh, you know, when like things have just been around, you just don't even think about the meanings. But so anyway, but anyway if they're, they're feeling like imposters, we're all screwed. Yeah. You know, so but uh but I sent it to him, and then he sends it back to me with an email from Linville from the specials Whoa. saying how much he liked the track, and he put some of his guitar on it. Wow. And so I was like, what? And then I brought it over to Pat Sansone from Wilco because he's a friend that lives in Nashville, and I was like, can you mix this? And he put that great organ solo on it too. So it all just like came together in like this like really just like – I feel like the more that I approach mu- making music from a place of hanging out with friends and fun, the the cooler shit turns out. It helps when uh, your friends are fucking cool. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very grateful to have really cool friends. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, but the, yeah, the song is absolutely crazy. Like, uh, I, I love I, it. I was, I was playing it a bit on, um, I, I, I DJ now on why not radio and, uh, awesome. I've been playing it during my, during my shows from time to time. And, uh, it's just a perfect vibe, like especially summertime, yeah. man. And, and you really, it's a it good a summer time. jam. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I, I might put it on my next record. I just wanted to put it out. You know, I also like know that Linville wasn't in very good health and, you know, I wanted right. him to hear it. And everything is so wild west these days. It's like, you know, oh, we can't let anything leak. Who cares? Exactly. You know. <laughs> exactly. Doesn't mean anything. Uh, oh my god. Man, we, we we all survived LimeWire. We can survive anything, right? Like. I know. I know. And I love Bandcamp too because it's like if you want to if you want to own it, you got to pay for it. And people are so cool and they remember like, you know, pay for the things that you like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I and I like that you can like just the whole model. Uh, I don't know about the ownership uh, since it changed, but um, the whole mm. model of Bandcamp is, is just something, especially with Bandcamp Fridays and stuff. It's yeah, just something I'm all about. Yeah, it's like oh, we can like record store day when it started. Like we can only have this party one time a year. Now it's two times a year. Right, and then it's like Bandcamp Friday. Like 
um, it's a party that works. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you want to have parties that work? Why save it for once a year when you don't have to? Exactly. For sure. For you sure. know. Um, all right. How about an old pick? You got an old song you wanted to share here? Yes. The song. I, okay. So when did the movie High Fidelity come out? Oh, that's like uh, 2000. Like 2000? Something like that. 2001. Yeah. Maybe? I think 2000. And I thought this was cool too because it's like, you know, people listen to podcasts for, for discovery. And when that scene in the movie when John Cusack's like, watch me sell seven copies of the beta band right now. <laughs> and he puts on Dry the Rain. And everybody's like, slow grooving and i was like man this song is so good and then i didn't think about it for a while and i always loved the beta band like when i first moved to new york i would listen to the three eps right. on repeat on the jukebox at a bar alone just because it it was so creative you know it was like the sound of you know it wasn't like art rock it's like this is the sound of the people that live in the middle of nowhere that mm -hmm. have to create cool things to keep themselves entertained and i dig it too and you know, when I was in New York, I listened to it. And then I went on tour with the Eels and I had a, a Scottish tour manager that was like, you know what the best walk on music is? Dry the rain from the beta band. And I was like, I love that song. And he's like, it's seven minutes long. And when it starts out, people are like, whatever. And then one element gets introduced. The bass comes in and the, you watch the crowd from the side and they're all kind of bobbing. And then the horn comes in and the beat flips. And then everybody's like in a full like do 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 by the time you go on. Yep. So it's like you're warming up your crowd. And then after that, his substitute tour manage his substitute tour manager for me became my husband and we bonded oh. over our love of the beta band. And that when we were apart, I kept that as my alarm clock song. And for eleven years it's been my alarm clock song and I'm never sick of it. That's beautiful. Let's listen to a little bit of Dry the Rain by the Beta Band. The best. You know what? Uh, so good. It's funny you mentioned the build up and, and the, the dynamic change through seven minutes because one of the challenges I have every week when we do this show is trying to find a 30 second snippet of a song. Mm. And and this song was almost, like I kept jumping back and forth. I was like, like I like the slow building uh, of the beginning, but I also yeah. like the manic nature of the end. And I just couldn't. So I just kind of went in the middle and said, this is what we get. <laughs> I mean, the ending makes me cry because it's such a build up and the lyrics are like, there's something inside that you want to say, say it. All right. It'll be OK. I will be your light. Right. It's like, oh, it makes me want to cry even just saying. It. Um, thanks for reminding me how amazing that band is. <laughs> I, sure. You know, I forgot. I, you know, there's so much music in the world. You know, it was I remember I went through a Gomez and and beta yeah. band like, uh, yeah. like period because it, it, the vibes sort of the same. Um, yeah. But, you know, you mentioned walk-on music. You know, there was a time when, like, walk-on music was not a thing for many bands and for many yeah. years. And it's only recently, I guess, I don't know, X number of years, a decade, where the walk-on songs, walk-on music became a thing that bands really invested in and really thought out. Yeah. And, planned. and there's nothing like a fucking great, incredible walk-on music, you know? Yeah, because it gets you ready. Like, exactly. all those old showbiz tricks. Exactly. Like, I'm so all about them now. Yeah. That's uh, that's awesome, and even, and even all the music, like you know, that bands will, you know, it, at some point, you know, there was some guy in the house who was just put playing playing a, a cassette or a CD of like some band, but it's yeah. become really a a, a a a it's become a thing, you know. It's cur yeah, it's like curated. It's, it's like curated. Okay. And then when, exactly when the show's over what do I want people to walk out holding hands and like, you know, kissing and figuring out their next plans to. Exactly. And and that answer yeah. to that is always uh, Move Closer to Your World by Al Ham, the uh, closing theme to Action News from Channel 6. <laughs> Maybe uh, we'll do that in Philly. Oh, That's please funny. do. Please <laughs> send do. me a text. I'll, I'll find I'll, it. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you the file. I got, <laughs> That's I got, awesome. I got it yes, do. Do it. Do it. Do it. That's um, cool. Bruce, what's your old Nicole song? Oh, it's from the first record, Nicole. It's the song that we discovered you with, maybe tonight. Yeah. Come on, man. I had to go back. I had to go back there, right? That song's gotten a whole new revamp live that I can't wait to record it again because I found out what was missing. And all right, so you, I'll, I'll wait. I'm not going to ask you what was missing. But oh, what was missing? I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you. You'll <laughs> okay. have to come to the show. Um, You'll have to come to the show. So take us back to. Um, then that was what 
17, 18 or so years ago, probably? God, yeah. It was 2005 or six. Okay. So do you take us back to when you were writing that song? Where, where, where did that happen? I remember exactly where I was when I wrote that song. I just moved back to Brooklyn. I was living in East Williamsburg, which is bed and I just came up with the da 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 and I was thinking, that's got to exist. And I called a bunch of friends and my sister, and I was like, okay, just listen to this. I'm going to sing it to you, and you think about it and tell me if it already exists. And then unanimous, no. But everybody was like, gives me the warm and fuzzies, but I don't think it's taken, you know? And then I was like, holy shit, it's mine. Like, just so excited. And I told my band about it, and they're like, do you have lyrics? And I was like, no. And I was asked to sing soprano, like space sci-fi, like singing with a guy that had this like crazy modular, like Moog thing, mm-hmm. just like a live performance. This guy, um, Tim from Tummy Touch Records. And he was like, what do you <laughs> need to do this gig? And I was like, I'm going to need a bottle of white wine. So I could feel comfortable enough to go and try to jam with this. But uh, after that, you know, drunk on white wine and getting ready to go see my band after not writing the lyrics. And I just sat outside with a notebook outside of the gig and that all just came to me. And I wrote it about whenever I was in New York or New Jersey, like, and I just graduated college like a few years before, but it was the Ava brothers. They would always call me and say, hey, can you book us a gig in New York or Philly or New Jersey? just out of the blue and it was always like yay they're coming Mm -hmm. you know so it was about like seeing friends unexpectedly you know and never knowing when you're gonna see them so it gives you this hope that like anything could happen Mm -hmm. it's incredible the the song is absolutely endured thanks (laughs) you know and it's great so uh let's listen to a little bit of it here god damn it (laughs) incredible incredible see it it still sounds fucking great like yeah it's like you know, and, and you know, it's, it's funny because you, you uh, chose the last dinner party. Um, next time I'm on the air, I think I'm going to play maybe tonight into a, into the feminine urge. So, awesome. Uh, yeah. Th- those will sound great. Those will sound great. I know. And, and, I you wish know, they I, would let me open for them. I, 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 would <laughs> I be love re- them so much. I would be remiss if I didn't say how much, you know, our audience in particular has loved you over all these years. So, and thank you for Your being... Your audience has been the best you know, thing thank to you happen for, to my life. Thank you for being such a a fan of us and yeah. a friend to us and you know over the years we've done some great shit together and uh, and, that, and that will continue so uh yeah i, just, I love it like i said it, you know it's you know i i often talk to people about artist development because they ask me about it like whatever yeah. right and i go well you know what i was like we're in the artist development business you know if mm-hmm. there's an artist you know like we've been playing your records for yeah. 18 years now like, I know. And, you know, we don't, you know, like commercial radio, it's all about a hit, right? But yeah, like, and it's very the same. And There's it, maybe it, 10 exactly. songs they pick from. Exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, yeah, I just, re- I just wanted to lot. say, uh, you know, the enduring quality. There's a timelessness. I listened to Neptune City the other night in its entirety for the first time probably since the record came out. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm and, re-recording it. Wow. That so is, I can own it because uh, I'll never own it. Right. And that was the thing with you right. know, major labels, you right. know, if you don't. Right. So, but there's so many things on that record and I love what tour did to it. Yeah. But, uh, my, like I know how to do it now. Yeah. You know, after yeah. years of making records and like the la- making my own records the last few times, I'm so excited because it's like, oh, that was the thing that was missing. But the thing was with the original recording, nothing was missing. There was just too much on it. Yeah. Yeah. So now, yeah, I get to cut things out. Can, anyway. um, see, you, I, I remember you shot down my um, uh, water ice for Italian ice. Can I? Can I name this one? Can 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 it be Neptune City Taylor's version? <laughs> no, That'd the, be funny. No, right? Nicole's version. No, of course. <laughs> no, no. I was just gonna say Neptune City revisited, oh, or like, like oh, you know, or like that's it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Neptune City revisited, like Jeff Lynne's ELO. Like that's right. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Exactly. ELO revisited. Ne- right. But, Nicole uh, Atkins, Neptune City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. With an apostrophe. But the, uh, you know, there was some songs too that didn't make that record that were like my, live, my most popular songs. But I I took them off because you know Tor's idea and my idea could not meet up. Right. And I just didn't want them to be that different. Right. So 
then they didn't fit on the next record. Yeah. But they fit on that record. And so yeah. it's going to be nice to have like Neptune City as I, you know, originally saw it. I'm going to ask, ask you, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, um, how do I want to ask this? Um, okay. So uh, a few weeks ago, we had Feist in to do the World Cafe. Nice. And we, we kind of had her do sort of a retrospective um, yeah. and talking about certain songs over her career. Um, so, you know, listen, when you signed to a major label, you sort of had this vision for yourself mm-hmm. that whatever whatever it was going to be, it was going to be. But you certainly had aspiration and, you know, yeah. hope that some shit would happen, right? Mm-hmm. Now, that, now that you're, you know, through it, been yeah. in total command of your career, et cetera, you learned a lot. Looking back, looking back, like, do you ever think about, like, what are... What are one or two or three things that you would would have changed? Had so you many had things. This experience behind you. So many. What things. are those? Gosh, like Bruce, before I quit drinking, I used to think, and I quit drinking seven years ago, like coming up on eight. I used to think that everybody in my crowd hated me. That's insane. They bought tickets. Like you don't spend money if you. I mean, maybe there's a couple people that spend money to go and like hate on something, but. Not like 500 people or 300 people, like that's insanity. So I used to think I just had a very um, warped self-esteem and uh, so I would change that. And um, I I don't know, I think I would have stood up for for more things. And I, and I did stand up for a lot of things, but you know, I mean, I left Columbia not they they could have put out my next record but i just i wanted to work you know me sitting around waiting for rick rubin to get back to me for like six months and then tell me like oh i don't hear thing anything in these 40 songs i've given you like that's it's cruelty and i think that you know a lot of younger artists these days get yourself a therapist understand what money means you know i would have done those things you know like how do i stay grounded while you know the world is making decisions for me you know and i and and that still happens you know but you got to ground yourself and you know money is not going to be in your life all the time hopefully it will be but figure out like where to put it where to invest it not just like oh this is how it'll be forever you know because it goes like this you know like that i didn't i thought like you know a career is just like all right, you do it, and if you get signed, it's like, boom, and you're fine, you know? But it's like, and then I thought when it wasn't going well, oh, no, it's going to be this way forever. And then all of a sudden, it's like, nope, it's, it's so it's, you just got to learn how to surf, you know? But I will say one thing, I never made any decisions <laughs> that I was uncomfortable with musically, you know? They wanted me to put out. Yeah certain songs that I hope to God no one will ever hear because they're so fucking bad but they're like these are yeah. hits and I listened to them today I found them and it, fuck yeah. I'm so glad I don't have to live with that so as long as you're making decisions like for me I've always made my decisions based off of what can I live with musically because when I got into music it was just because I wanted to be part of the scene because it was cool you know and I wasn't like okay now I'm gonna go you know, on tour with John Mayer and make songs like about like, you know, breath or with breathy singing that repeat a word all the mm-hmm. time. No. Yeah. So, so I can live with that. You know, it's, it's great that even though you've got a fair amount of distance from that, those very early days when you were starting out and making your quote unquote major label debut and getting all the advice that you wanted to listen to or not listen to, um, it's amazing that, you know, you're still at the point of your career where you can apply all that learning and just yeah. continue to move forward, you know, because yeah. that, that ultimately is, is sort of what it's about, you know? Yeah. It's, you know? yeah, it's not losing. It's, it's just, yeah. How do you, for any artist that like is young and gets signed to a major, like you're not told anything, you're no. not told how it works. And, yeah. you know, the person that signed me was fired like a couple months after. And I was originally <laughs> making my record with Lenny Kay. Right. I felt like he was like my dad or something, you mm-hmm. know, like it was awesome. And then new people came in, they got fired. New person comes in. Now there's 
firing Lenny K. Yeah. But Lenny K is going to bat for me for them to not fire me, which is so yeah. nice of him. Yeah. And, you know, then the record is going to come out. It's done after so long. And then Rick Rubin becomes the new president two weeks before it's supposed to come out. And he takes it off of the schedule. Yeah. And then I come out in an Amex commercial about my music during the U.S. Open that was supposed to air during the weekend of the record release. And everybody thought I was an actress. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. But like so out of my, con that's the thing. It's like so many things are so out of your control. If somebody just told me the only thing you can control is the work you make, <laughs> then, man, yeah. I would, I'd probably be alive for at least 10 more years longer than I am now after all the years that took off of me. Yeah. You well, know, with stress. Yeah. I, I think one of the, one of the testaments uh, to you and your perseverance is like that. I know so many people who that broke. Like, the, I know. you know, that same exact situation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, destroyed them and destroyed their desire to even continue to create, you know, and, the, you know, we're, we're blessed that you have continued to push through and that, like, this yeah. is your life and that you found a way to, you know, continue to do it in, in, in the way you want to do it. Yeah. Like, if anybody took that away from me, that would feel like death. Because music's the only thing that, like from when I was three years old and saw Tommy on HBO when my parents were sleeping, I was like, that is me. You know, like uh, that's what uh -huh. I want. Right. And nothing nothing else has ever really mattered except for, you know, people, places, and music. Hell you know, yeah. so, you know, it's nice to, to have a big team supporting you and be a butt. If you don't, you'll figure it out anyway. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, we opened for this this guy um, who I really like his music. And he was, you know, popular. Like, I don't know. I can. I mean, his music's great. And But we met. We were fans of each other. He's younger than me. And I was like, I would love to open for you. And he was like, what? You know, but I can. Like, and he trashed the dressing room after because he was like, I'm sorry about that. You know, I just like... I didn't have my like sound guy that and my horn section and everybody was like in the crowd was like digging it even though I was like trying to do the Dylan thing and be mean to them and I was just like yo I'm like you're a great artist and I'd like to see you have a long career in this but if those are the things that are pissing you off you're not gonna last long and he was like yeah but you know and I was like I am opening for you and you were a fan of mine in high school. If you don't see how this is a constant escalator. Yeah. Like, you're not going to make it. Like, and by yeah. make it, I don't mean make it. Like, I mean, I think the only version of making it is continuing to do it if you love it. For sure. For sure. So yeah. the uh, so the tour starts September 5th in yes. Pauling, New York. Uh, of course, we mentioned September 11th at 118 North here in Wayne um, and then continues through to the end of September, September 21st at uh, uh, TVI. Um, mm -hmm. I do have to say one thing, though. Uh, the 12th, you're playing the Wonder Bar in you yeah. know, uh, your, uh, you know, uh, your home base of uh, Asbury Park, essentially. Um, and uh, I just rewatched um, uh, the Wonder Bar is the last place I saw you at, uh, which was uh, last summer. That was a wild show. It was great. Absolutely I know. Absolutely great. Um, and I, I have a very funny story to tell you uh, a, a afterwards about it. But uh, okay. uh, the... Um, uh, and, and I had a, I did a recording of maybe tonight uh, that you clo uh, you know for the closing, and it's up on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. It's absolutely uh, b brilliant uh, as you are. Um, <laughs> but in it, at the end, you said good night. I'm not coming back until I have another album, and if I do, yell at me. So I hope you expect to get yelled at on the 12th. Well, okay. Here's the thing. It's written. <laughs> okay, that counts. I think that counts. That does count. Yeah, uh, that, that, that counts. does count. That counts. It's yeah. written, but I also need to make money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I have to do the show. <laughs> okay. I think that's... You know, but I'm so glad you remembered that. Yeah. Yeah. So expect the... Yes. Good. Expect yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I can deal with it. I, I'm Dutch and Connie's kid, man. I've been getting yelled at 
since I was born. <laughs> Hell yeah. So so the the tickets are available. Uh, you can go to NicoleAtkins.com and find those. And you can also go to NicoleAtkins.Bandcamp.com if you want to buy any of her music. Or yeah. also there's artwork available. You sell all kinds of stuff. You've got yeah. like you've got a great um, uh, setup of uh, creativity that you put out. I like shopping and I like making shit and selling it so I can shop. That's awesome. And buy other people's stuff. <laughs> exactly. If exactly. These, if these folks want to follow you on the socials, what's the best uh, socials to track you down on? I'm the most active on Instagram. So at, that one's at Nicole Atkins, right? At Nicole Atkins. And I'll, I think they're all at Nicole Atkins. Okay. TikTok is at Nicole Atkins, which I'm going to try to get creative with out here in Mexico. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to do with them, but. <laughs> most people don't. Apparently most people this, don't. This week I need to be demure and mindful, and I'm going to really lean into it. That's incredible. Um, it, it, thank you so much for doing this, and and, yeah. and not just for doing this, but for creating music and continuing on. Um, you're one of my favorite musicians. Period. Uh, end stop. Like no no smoke or anything. Like I, I absolutely adore you. It and makes it sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it means the world that, that you would nice. you would you would come and, they, and hang with us. Yeah, for sure. Oh, For man. sure. It's really nice to see you guys. It's good to see you, too. Likewise. Um, as always, uh, you, we put together a playlist, and uh, uh, there's an ongoing playlist of all the songs. So Nicole's picks and oh, our fun. picks will be up there. Well, not mine, because I picked something that's not on Spotify to add to the playlist. But everybody uh, <laughs> everybody else's stuff will be up there, and you can find it. I'll pick a song off of, uh, um, is the um, is the stuff that you did with Jim, the, the duo stuff? Um, yes, uh, okay. a man like me, a man okay. like me. That's with what me I'm and Jim's Clavunos. Yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah. Playlist because I was going to be my other pick, but I, that's I was, another yeah. record I still need to put out. It's great. I it's got, done. I got the seven inch. Uh, I got Dude, the seven it's so good. It's, it's so good. It is so good. You got another another uh, person you collab incredible with. He has been my my most important collaborator. He yeah. like I always thought I'd have a mentor in the form of like an older female musician. And instead, I got Jim Sclavunos. I got a six foot eight punk. <laughs> that That's good. Is, That's okay. You know, older than me. That was the first person to ever tell me that I wasn't old, mm -hmm. and that I'm never going to be old, as long as I don't, you know, think about it that way. It's incredible. It's good advice. Good advice. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, as always, you can find us on the socials. You can find me at Yo, that's my John on everything. You can find Bruce at Some Velvet Blog on everything. Plus, you can hear Bruce every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on WXPN, and you can regularly hear me on Why Not Radio from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, plus, the Yo, that's my John podcast, which is actually on hiatus until September. So uh, uh, don't go listen yeah. to that. But you can go listen to old ones. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll share a link of when Nicole was on Yo, that's my John. Now look at me tying things. Boom. Together. <laughs> Always tying things Boom. together. Guys, thank you so much for listening, and you too, thank you so right. much for joining.